Hi, I'm Ann. I'm Emma. Hi, I'm Kayla. I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Austin, Texas, because it's Happy Wally Wednesday! Hey, everybody, <laughs> happy Wednesday! We are kicking off December. It's been a little bit yeah. chilly here, so we're liking that. The phone's ringing. I'm going to pretend just for a second I don't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, tell us, besides working your cans off, tell us what have you been felting on? Well, right now I'm working on a wet felted gnome. Oh. So that'll be fun. <laughs> I'm working on our Living Felt Monarch kit. Oh. And I've got one wing down, so that's cool. <laughs> you got your mom recently hooked up. Yes, I did. She made a mushroom and a snail, and it was very cute and professional. <laughs> yes. Um, I've been wet felting some scarves. Oh. I just finished them the other day. But probably the cobwebs, huh? Yeah, the cobweb mm -hmm. scarves. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. super fun. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, And I've been wet felting in Nano felting over resist to make cute little handbags and purses. <laughs> besides moving into her new yeah, home. Yeah, besides that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for so much for everything. Thanks for being here, everybody. We're going to have a little felting chat today, so thanks for coming. Thank you. Hi. I don't... Okay. <laughs> Thanks for being here, everyone. Happy Wooly Wednesday. We are Living Felt based in Austin, Texas. And this is what we like to do on Wednesdays is hang out with our friends for about an hour. So hopefully you see some folks checking in and saying hi and where they're from. If you're watching a live show, definitely do that. And if you're watching the playback, hey, why not? Tell us where you're from and maybe what you have been felting on to this season. I'm gonna refresh my screen here so that I can see you all and say hi to some people. Um, who do we got, Anne? Oh, we've got Ruth in Illinois, Cherie in Washington, Susan in California, Carol in um, Canada. Let's see. Oh, Dawn. I see. I'm yeah. In. Dawn, Wendy, Maureen. I see you all. And Maureen is coming right for a workshop next year, I know. And there's Kathy Falls. There's Judy. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. So are you going to felt and chat with us? Every Wednesday is different. And this Wednesday, we're kind of coming to the close of what has been an amazing year for me personally and f for us as a just a company and a community too. And so I thought we would felt and chat today. Our theme this year was explore, expand, stretch. Maybe you'd like to think about one of your greatest explorations this year or one of you know the things that you made this year that you really caused yourself to stretch. We can chat about that. Um, I'm going to be felting a little gingerbread house and it's not necessarily a tutorial. I just thought that maybe you all would bring something to felt on and we could have like a little craft circle, felt circle for the hour and also get some input of things that you might like to learn next year so we can prepare ourselves for more felt alongs like we did a lot of this year, um, even any more tutorials or kits that y'all wanna see or just things that you're wanting. So how many of you all, if you're gonna be felting while we chat today, maybe tell us what you're gonna make. And hey, Anne, by the way, can people post a picture? Can people post a picture while they're on? Like if they're on their phone, That's can you post a picture? Because if you can't post a picture while we're on, it might be fun for you to either post a picture of what you're felting on today so we can get a snapshot of what you're doing. And uh, if not, if you can post something from your computer, you might even post a single picture of your exploration this year so that we can go back and look for that in our group. So for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, um, we have a great group called Living Felt Friends right here on Facebook, and that's all you gotta search is Living Felt Friends. We also post all these videos immediately after the live show, which is about an hour, to our videos tab right here at fb.com slash living felt under videos, you see all of these. And then almost all of them make it to our YouTube channel now under Wooly Wednesdays, where we also have other playlists for wet felting tutorials and needle felting tutorials. And some of the longer live felt alongs are under live or something like that. Anyway, so check that out. And so what are some people making? <laughs> Let's see, Sammy <laughs> shares that she's making the feet of a long-legged gnome. Uh, Carol says she wants to try and do the gingerbread house that you Oh, cool, cool, cool. Okay. 
So this is what I'm going to make today. So by the way, I'm uh, just going to make another simple little gingerbread house and show you how to do that. And I know that, yeah, a couple of people were going to do that. Yeah, if anyone can post a picture, it would be fun just to see if you can uh, upload a picture while we're here. So I'm going to pull up a chair because we're going to turn down the camera. There's no reason to look at my mug this whole hour. And what we can also do is answer some questions for you. Now, we won't be running and fetching products or be doing any demonstrations other than the projects that we're working on today. So we're going to take any questions that you post that are um, outside of maybe basic needle felting technique of what we're working with today, and we're going to table them for another time, which is what we often do is just kind of build up fodder so we know what to bring you on another show. And then I'm going to sit down uh, and felt and look at what some of y'all are writing too. So we're going to turn down the cameras. Um, these are just some little ornaments I have. I'll turn them around so you can see them. This little gingerbread house is just made freehand and that's super easy to do. And this little star is just made with a cookie cutter. So if you haven't felted with a cookie cutter, that is a super, super easy thing to do and we can answer any questions you have about that. So people say they, they don't see how they can post pictures. I don't know why I thought I saw that somewhere. Maybe it's after the live show or something. I think it might be after the live show. I can find where to put an emoji, but not. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna um, park these, I guess. I don't know if they're in the camera. I'm gonna park these and I'll show, I'll show y'all how I made these. And look, you can just make some blanks and then decorate them later if you want to. And oh, um, honey shares frappuccino, fresh baked Christmas cookies, and Wooly Wednesday equals uh, ten minutes. <laughs> that sounds nice. I thought about bringing a snack, as if you know I'm not always snacking anyway. But yeah, that would be yeah. Tell us what you're snacking on. <laughs> uh, Vicky says she doesn't have her stuff out. She's, she's so she's gonna watch and learn. Okay, so this is just a kind of simple thing, and I, um, more than me flap the whole time, I do want to hear maybe what some uh, things are that you would like to learn for next year, or questions you have about your own felting now. Let me see if I can move this. This is one way to do these little guys. One, you could cut out a paper template if you want them to be really uniform. And if you have a paper, or a cardboard template as a guide, one of the great things you can do is then needle felt around the perimeter so you kind of know where the insides will be. So you can have one already made or like I say, make one out of cardboard or paper or whatever. And this is just like a thickness of our MC1 Merino batting. I like to work with it kind of, you can see how lofty and thick it is so that you can make this piece thick enough to have dimension and shape. Wow, a lot of cookie. A lot of, people are snacking on a lot of cookies today. <laughs> <laughs> cookie, it's cookie season. So this is kind of how I first started making shapes is with some kind of cutout or guide. It's sort of like the reverse of a cookie cutter because you just trace around the outsides and use it as a guide. And you can make your, your stuff as big or, you know, as big or roomy as you want above where it's going to go. And I'm going to tack this down just a little bit, get a little bit of air out of the middle. <sighs> Hi, Annalise, there in Sweden. Um, it looks like Linda Richardson could use some help on angel wings. So that might be a good topic for the group if someone really likes. I've seen a variety of angel wings. That might be a great topic to post in the group this week and see how many people will share their angel wings. Now that I have these guides, I'm just going to fold this stuff in and use it for dimension. Von Beth asks, what's the average thickness of the MC1 batting? Gosh, you know, because you can squash it, it's kind of hard to say what's, you know, what's the average thickness. Um, we can open one up, you know, because it's lofty. Like as an example, if I pull this out, you know, it's a lofty batting. It's lofty. So see, it's like might be a couple of finger thicknesses thick, you know, and it's hard to say how you measure something that you can squash. You know what I mean? But this is kind of what it looks like. It's kind of a lofty batting. 
like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, Dawn. It's my dear friend Dawn online. Thank you, Dawn. Dawn says she loves the gingerbread house and she loves looking at Oh, my mug. I was thinking the living felt mug. Dawn will be here next year. She's going to teach some of her amazing felt crowns. That I think that's going to be such a fun class. I can hardly wait. That's going to be in the fall. And we still have room in that class, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, says hi sweet friend <laughs> sweet Kimberly's working on her sculpture I don't know if y'all seen Kimberly Pulley's been working on some amazing 3d wet felt and later needle felt the details sculptures uh, if you haven't seen those in our group you really ought to because they are just absolutely one of a kind absolutely unique absolutely original so say hey, see how I have this big bulky end here and it might just make a big lump right there but this is kind of thin I can just tease this out a little bit and you can be real methodical and lay it all, all out super even but I find that you can um, with the batting you can kind of piece it as you go to so I'm just basically gonna make a house shape and then decorate mine Oh, Sammy says she has a unicorn cookie cutter. How cute. What else? What are some other people making? So what, let's think about what are some ideas um, that you have that you would like to maybe us to have us write down for our list of things to teach next year. This year we did a number of felt alongs. Um, we've done some short tutorials like this, which we can encapsulate into an hour. We do lots of little demonstrations, but we've done some shorty felt alongs and we did some longer ones. We did like a six or seven series on needle felting a doll with an armature. We did wet felting a pumpkin over a resist. We did a cob wet felting a cobweb scarf, right? Did we do something else? I feel like we did another the another long felt along but maybe I'm mistaken so that was my big explore expand stretch this year was um, getting into some new technology so I could do those longer felt alongs from home and I think we're ready to do more of those next year so, mm -hmm. so far folks want to see more uh, landscape tutorials and 2D mm -hmm. Okay, landscape. We're going to take notes of all these things y'all say. So I just peeled my little gingerbread house off the foam. And then I want to needle felt it from the other side too. So notice that we don't, um, I'm not driving into the foam. I'm just using the foam to kind of bounce off of. It might attach to the foam a little bit, but the more you needle felt it, the thicker and denser it gets. And um, the thicker and denser it gets and the more stability it's going to have and also you the less far you have to go through You'll find that as you work it and work it that you can just needle felt the very surface So for those of you who are new I'm using the 42 triangle which is our the yellow needle is our 42 triangle It's very fine um, and what's great about it is the barbs can be very close to the tip of the needle and so you can end up poking very 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 shallow when I'm needle felting at home when I'm working on something in great detail I'm gonna get really really up close to my piece so that I can see every little bit every little hair every little wisp every little lump and bump so get really up close to your work so that you can see what's happening. Let's see, I know that doesn't, so like here's this one. Get really, really, and it's guiding me now. We have two cameras here, so it's hard to tell where I am in each one. Yeah, but just get really, really up close and personal to your work so that you can see that fine detail. And I just wanted to show that with this, like see how this is all loose and kind of hairy right now? If you keep needle felting it, it's gonna firm up and get like these so that they're not furry anymore. You just gotta get to a point where you're not driving all the way through the foam anymore. Oh, fun. So a couple folks have shared kind of their, going back to the explore, expand, stretch themes. Some folks have shared 
what their stretch was this year. Uh, Sonia shared that her stretch was what felt in a dress. Um, oh, workshop. yeah. And Luann shares, my stretch was faces on the dolls. Oh, that's very fun. Yeah, Sonia says her stretch was uh, doing the dress, and of course we took the dress workshop together with Charity Vandermeer. She's coming back next year to do a coat class, which I'm going to take also. And was it Luann said the faces? That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, I just have to say it has been such a treat for me this year to see all the dolls and all the characters that you all have come up with since we did that together. Um, it's like you, you've discovered something that you really had in there all along and all you needed were just a couple of tools to help you let it out. And I just love seeing them. And the same with the gnomes or even the scarves. It has just been such a treat to see what you post after because everyone is so unique and original. And that's part of the fun, I think, of this medium is how, um, how many different directions you can take the same process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terry says her stretch was the deer with Kiyoshi. Yeah, that was an amazing class and really awesome to see what everyone made. So of course Kiyoshi's coming back next year and we're gonna do another three-day class in the summer. We're gonna be doing um, cats and you can do a domestic cat or a wild cat. And, um, and so I think his emphasis is gonna be on doing spots and stripes in the fur. So we, that class is sold out, but we do have a waiting list. Um, if you wanna take that class, you can get on the wait list because people's lives always change. That's all the way until summer. So we have quite a bit of time for that. Okay, I might jump to one of my other, my other houses. So uh, Annalisa, she would like to learn nano felting. <laughs> Colleen says, let's do mice wearing clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we got to get Danielle the Vincent Sadowski to come. I've been trying <laughs> to get her to come because I think her mice are just adorable. Absolutely. And her business is Farmhouse Felts, if y'all want to follow her on Instagram. So follow these folks on Instagram that are popping up. Follow Kiyoshi, follow uh, Farmhouse Felts, follow follow your friends on Instagram. Follow us too. Aw, Quentin <laughs> shares that doll felt, the doll felt along was an amazing gift you gave us. Oh, you guys, <laughs> thank you. I think seeing what you all make is an amazing gift. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I am going to be working with, I didn't show you my, my supplies today, which I usually do. I saw somebody ask. So these are our MC1 um, bats. And this is just our cotton white that I'm going to use for my design. So this was clay. I saw Anne answered. This is vintage red, black onyx, and just dark chocolate. Right? So we call it dark chocolate. So I'm just going to make some little decorations on my house. Mm-hmm. I hope you all post uh, pictures of what you're making after after we show. So if, if for those of you, can I just see a round of hearts? I missed them all for those of you who are felting along live. Let me see a little round of hearts if you're felting along. I'm gonna pull off a little bit of wool so that I can make the decoration on my house. So let me show you how I would do that. It's just a suggested idea and then you can do it however you want. So I'm going to pull off. I folded my bat first of all because it allows me to control it a little bit more easily. And I'm going to pull off a long skinny strip. Sometimes working with the length is really helpful in the bat even though the fibers are short. So now that I have this, I'm actually going to take another strip. Another real skinny skinny strip. Because what I want to make are like long links. But the reason I use this instead of a roving or, or a sliver like the New Zealand Corydale is because the fibers are short and the needle felt really smooth and flush and um, they won't look hairy when we're done. So to make just a door and stuff, I'm just going to pull out a really, a really thin length. And what you can do is just tease it, just tease it to a real narrow, narrow length. By teasing it out, draft it out, 
not teased, drafted out uh, so that it gets narrow and thin. And you can even roll it a little bit in your hands if you want to really get all the fibers close together. Just roll it a little bit and then you can coax the rest, the rest down with your felting needle. Alrighty, Kate shares, my stretch was making my autumn gnome, which was the first real armature. Uh, that was really cool. Was his name Mulch? I loved his name. <laughs> his name was Mulch. Okay, I'm going to make my little door round. You, you know, start with your door or whichever, whichever it makes the most sense for you, either whether it's the door or the windows or something. I'm just going to start with the door. And Robin asks, how do you keep your foam so clean? I uh, use a roller tape and rub it, but it always wears a little, and uh, it always leaves a little felt, which can be transferred to the next color used. I I really try and clean mine after, and I'll pick it out. But I try I try to attach very little to the foam. I really try and be mindful of that. Now, if you're doing stuff like 2D pictures, just know that that's part of the equation. If you're doing 2D pictures and you have like a felt sheet down and it stays down the entire time and you're putting like a massive amount of detail onto your work, you're going to work your foam. You really will. The fiber is going to transfer and that's just part of the nature of the beast. Like Danny, um, Danny Ives goes through his foams also um, because there's just so much intense application of color and you're not lifting your piece. So you might try and put a buffer on it. See if you like working with some people put uh, you know, a felt barrier, or I, I used to put like a linen or cotton cloth on my foams. I don't anymore. I just clean them after each use. And yeah, if you do lots of intense uh, 2D work, and I think Robin was really working on, um, Robin was working on uh, a portrait for a friend that was Robin Barrett. Uh, oh, oh, not the same Robin. Well, so Robin, I would say some people uh, keep like a white, a foam for white, and a foam for like pristine white, pristine black. And honestly, I'm not so fussy. I just clean it in between myself. And I'll, I'll pick it out. I'll go and just pick it out after. Mm -hmm. Oh, Darlene Samuels shares that she's been making a lot of gnomes and owls as gift and just got home from some Christmas shopping. <laughs> that is so sweet. I love seeing all the gnomes. I really do. And you know, little ornaments too make such great gifts, like, or a gift with a gift, if you make a little ornament. It's a great gift with a gift or a little gift tag. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not very clever with colors when it comes to these gingerbread houses. I tend to find like a little rhythm and, and stay with it. But I thought, you know, you could get cute with it, pinks and light blues and, you know, make it a little more gumdroppy. I think that I have to make a number of them until I start to really deviate and get creative. But for now, just because I started one, I'm going to kind of make this like I made the other one. And what I did is I put like a little line so it looks like the door is open, you know, like it's just kind of cracked open. So I'm going to do that too. Oh, Jennifer Sundstrom shares, going to practice now and then do it with the cadets later. Oh, I love so much that everyone is teaching and sharing and man, that is just so fun for us, especially to see what the little kids do. Gosh, that just lights me up so much to see those little ones and how unabashed they are in what they're willing to try. And Kate asks, uh, she says, I do pull up my 2D portraits as I go from the phone. Is that a problem? Um, so Kate's talking about when you're doing 2D needle felted portraits. And Anne, just for the sake of someone who doesn't know, would you maybe grab just one of mine that right there in the drawer, in the bin right there? I'm going to show you all what she means. And maybe, um, and she says, okay, this one's a little bit thicker, but this is a good one. This was one of my first ones. Give me one of the dog ones, sorry, on felt, just because it's thinner. Um, and I'll show y'all what she what she means. Okay, now I'm gonna make a doorknob. So do you see how easy that is to make a line? It's so easy to make a line, especially with something like the batting. You don't have to have a long stapled fiber to do that. And I am going to put uh, a little doorknob on here. Oh, thank you so much, this one's perfect. Okay, so she, Kate mentioned that when she does her 2D portraits, um, which is the same, I'm using all the same wool that we're using right now, that she tends to lift it 
And what happens is, here's what the back, you see all this white area. This is just a felt, a sheet of 100% wool felt that I needle felted this picture on. And then the entire face is made with our same MC1 battings like this. And this purple is the same batting. If you, if you peel and lift it all the time, what happens is where here you're putting a super dense concentrated amount of fiber and then you lift it up, you're constantly shifting the surface of your piece. And so it, it, it tends to support more consistency if you just go ahead and leave it in place and don't peel it up. And I know that kind of goes against maybe what we taught in the beginning, beginning, we constantly lift, lift, lift your work. But especially if you work on something that's a little bit thicker, like these wool sheets, you can see they have a little bit of dimension to them. Your fiber is going to stick to the foam, but I think it's going to support a more consistent picture if you don't peel it up and try and put it down because then there tends to be fiber on the back and it tends to warp the substrate a little bit. So I just leave it on and leave it flat. That's my recommendation anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Kathleen says, uh, very new to felting. Should I get all the different needles? I'm interested in doing 2D projects. I'm a rug hooker and I have a lot of patterns on linen that I want to felt. Oh, I would say, so what's her name? Uh, Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Kathleen says she wants to start doing pictures and patterns and does she need to get all the different size needles? And I would say no. If you're only doing 2D, you might find that you like um, the fine needles and maybe a medium needle. And it just, I would just play with a medium needle. Now I think Danny, as an example, she uses a lot of the 38 star on her pieces and then she'll use the 42 and one other and I forget what it is but um, I wouldn't go any coarser if you're just going to be doing thin designs there's no real reason to I'm going to make my little windows now and it's easier you can either do a square window or do the window panes and then fill it in it doesn't really matter whichever you like Sonia uh, shares when I was a kid we had brown foam gingerbread house ornaments with <laughs> white icing that looked just like your cute little ornament. Oh, that's so sweet. I like to wear this one as like a little pin. Um, it's like it's like a big obnoxious pin, but it works. So you can either, I think these ones I filled in the holes, you can either make a square and then put your white piping over it. And notice I just did the same thing like trace the perimeter and then I'm gonna fold this fiber in. If you make a line with your needle like this, tick, tick, tick across, and then you fold the fiber in, that's how I get like a nice straight line. And if that feels too bulky, then you can just fill in the panes of your window, which is what I think I did on this one, is just fill in the panes. Any way you go about it, just find techniques that work for you and you're gonna find that they repeat from project to project to project. Mm -hmm. What else would you like to learn next year? So I saw some nano felting. I saw, uh, well, I read, I heard about the landscapes and we're gonna work on that, on that one, uh, bringing landscape bringing landscapes and types of 2D pictures. We have a couple of plans for 2D uh, pictures next year. You know, we can't deliver everything in January. I wish we could, but I think we're gonna have a really full year of classes. And um, I do hope to encourage you to, you know, come out and take a class when you can, or just come out and visit us. Maybe we can have some open house days next year. At some point, we're going to move next year. We don't have any details <laughs> yet. We only know we're moving. <laughs> That's all we know. See, hats was another big topic for next year. What kind of hats? Do y'all want a wet felt hats? Because my friend Dawn's on here. And I really think uh, that's... Uh, Dawn makes the most beautiful hats. If y'all don't know Dawn Edwards, look her up here on Facebook and follow her. One, she's just a lovely human. And two, um, you know, she travels all over the world teaching. And, uh, you know, maybe sometimes we take, we take our U.S. teachers for granted because they're here. But oftentimes they are so booked and their classes sell out. Uh, Dawn's going to come. We're going to te teach felt crowns, which is going to be a great opportunity to learn some interesting techniques that you can apply either to vessels 
other even wall sculptures if you want or to hats you know something that you would wear on your head um, so that's going to be really fun but she also uh, teaches hats when she travels and um, and we're gonna do we're planning a video uh, next year so we were thinking maybe it would just be hats mm -hmm. so was that web thing hats that everyone wants to learn so, and pouring in right now. you know, okay, so Anne's trying to keep up with you all. And you know what else? Kate Kaprowski is coming in February. We still have space in her class. And I have to say, I'm completely surprised because that class, we're going to do ruffle scarves, which is one of the biggest requests we had. It was a really big request we had in 2017 to do ruffle scarves. And now we have time for it. And then also we're going to do animal hoods. So you can learn how to make sort of a hood type hat with ears and a tail and that's going to be really fun. Honestly, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> Wendy, Wendy wants to go. We're moving to Connecticut, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if my little, my old bones could survive Connecticut. <laughs> Is it like really cold there? <laughs> For sure. I'm, I might stop with this, this window. Whoops. And see how far I get. I'll, I'll add my little reef line too. Mm-hmm. Cherie Davidson says, Danny's work is incredible and she's pre-ordered her book already. I didn't know you could pre-order the book, but when Danny comes, uh, Danny is going to be here in March. Is that right? Danny's going to be, Danny Ives is going to be here in late March. And some of you may know, um, she is a phenomenal 2D artist uh, with needle felting, 2D artist in general, but she, you know, really getting a lot of popularity with her needle felting. And she uses our fibers and, uh, you know, a good portion of what she does, which of course thrills us. But she's going to be here in March and um, we're going to be doing a book release party. So she'll be our guest on Wooly Wednesday and we're going to do a book release the day after. So even if you didn't get into her class, you could come and participate in the book signing. So we'll have her book. <laughs> Dawn says, I love to make hats. Dawn, you are so awesome at it too. Sammy wants a witch hat. <laughs> Sam, you gotta check out uh, Kate's online classes for her witch hats. <laughs> Alrighty, there's a debate going on about what state we're moving to. Where do y'all? <laughs> Pennsylvania, Washington, New York. I think I need a bus, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I could only get a bus. Um, I don't think I'm old enough for a bus yet, though. I think I need like 10 more years before I go on the bus tour. I don't know. <laughs> maybe five at least before I go to on the bus tour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe a couple more years and then I'll come see y'all. I think we have to go to Pennsylvania because there's so many uh, friends in Pennsylvania and California where I was. Um, someone says, do you ever give workshops where? Uh, East Coast. <laughs> not yet. Not me, not yet. I would. It's just we've been, we've been growing so much here uh, that I haven't broken away because there's... Um, just so much to do here right now and so I haven't yet. Oh, Wendy says, is kidnapping a store and its employees and owners still illegal? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna show y'all how I do this this little roof line here and first maybe we'll we'll put in our heart after but I'm gonna show you at least how I do the roof line <sighs> mm -hmm. I'm trying to read all y'all's uh, all y'all's comments <laughs> <laughs> Linda says was that Don Edwards yes Don Edwards who you see posting on here she'll be back in um, September come in September come 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 it's gonna be really fun okay so I'm working with my same like little draft here one thing you can do is kind of uh, take the end twist it like I did and uh, maybe tie it into a knot uh, I'm just trying to get it to kind of hold hold a shape so I'm tying it into a knot and then I'm actually gonna anchor that down on my foam here if I can and I'm going to start to twist. I'm going to draft it out a little bit and I'm going to start to give it a twist. Twist real close to the end. 
What we want to do to create these little curly cues is create like an over twisted, you know, it's not really a yarn, but you start to twist, twist, twist and get a real strong twist in there. Enough of a twist that when you bring it in on itself, it's going to kink. So just test your kink and just get that twist in there real good. If it won't stay, then you can start it on your piece. There we go. See how that, see how it twists up like that? Does that show? That's what we want to do right here on our piece. And I find it's kind of easy if maybe you just start at one end and work your way down. So what I'm going to do is take this and I try not to worry about it too much. I'm not going to fuss with it. I'm going to let it do what it wants to do. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of pin this down and then I'm going to tack this little start that I made right here on my gingerbread house. If any of you saw our mushroom tutorial, it's just a simple little project for needle felting mushrooms. This is how I created that little under part of the mushroom. And certainly there's like going to be a technical word for it, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> now I just let it twist, 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 twist. You kind of have to be patient with this because it, it's going to do what it's going to do. And then as it gets that kink, just tack it down and just keep piling on the kink. Usually I do that part last, but, and then you can twist it right from where it is and just keep working it around. Meridian, Debbie asks, I see words on the ornament. Is that hard? Words? I don't have words on the ornament. Where are they? What words? I don't know what we're talking about. I'm going to use my 36 needle and I'm just going to tack this on my foam a little bit. I want it to stay. Maybe that there's not really words, right? Don't know what you're looking at. These are just, these are just lines and such, but no real words. This is stitching. Uh, that's just stitching along the bottom, but the house is needle felted. So twist, 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 twist. It takes patience. And you got to keep going the same direction. It's easy to kind of forget maybe what direction you went. And just let it pile up. And every time you get it to where you get one of the kinks in there, just tack it down and then twist off that kink. Yeah, I, you know, I, I definitely consider that about felting the four sides or stitching, maybe, you know, stitching them together because the thicker they are, the more challenging that will be, you know, to get them to, to needle felt together. So she's saying, can you attach these? And the thing is, is, you know, like these are already pretty well formed. So what you might do is start maybe like leave the back part loose so you have a joiner plate. You know what I mean? So like if you want to put them together, you might start making a little joiner plate between two so that if you were to, f you know, you have to felt this a little bit so it has a little bit of dimension, but maybe if you kind of make a little s join, it would support putting it together like a house and then you can needle felt that in. Was I on camera when I did that? Yeah, then you could kind of, it's gonna give you something to kind of work with to put it all together. So you might try something like that. You could also blanket stitch it with yarn. That'd probably look super cute. It'd probably be a really cute way to go. Mm -hmm. Sherry says, thanks so much for teaching this technique. Oh, the, 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 the icing, yeah. <laughs> the icing drops. <laughs> I know it's kind of fussy and I'm not sure, like usually I'll, I would have it in my lap, but the best thing to do is just over curl it so that it kinks on itself and then just keep tacking it down. There's almost no way around it. And then I'm going to trim, you know, just trim all of that with white along the top too, and it'll hide whatever whatever you have. The most important thing is to kind of draft it out and then twist it because it's kind of hard to do. It's hard to draft it out once you've twisted it. So you want to kind of tack down all that you've twisted. Mm -hmm. Annalise says, so fun. Thanks for, thanks for teaching so many great ideas, Marie. Oh, you guys. Uh, Kim says, the gingerbread looks so real, it's making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, isn't there so many different kinds of gingerbread? 
I've never really made a good successful gingerbread, but my friend Monica in Switzerland, she used to make like the most incredible cakes, uh, like professionally, and um, she makes the most beautiful gingerbread houses every year, like, and sells them like super fancy. Yeah, I would like to do that one day. Go to Sweden and make gingerbread houses with my friend Monica. That's on my list, bucket list. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm that's on my official to-do list mm -hmm. what color is the brown this is our mc1 clay if we didn't answer that already this is clay in mc1 i know the colors can be you know challenging to shop online but something else should know is you can um you can email a picture of what you're wanting to make to customer service and we can try and help you match the color it helps us if we know what your project is you could be wet felting or needle felting or doing a combination so if we know the techniques you're going to be uh, using in your project um, if you can send us real good clear pictures we can help you color match um, and we do that all the time sometimes we will have to email you back a few pictures uh, you know so that you can choose from but we're absolutely happy to do that and our email is customer service at livingfelt.com um, Anne's nodding did you post that Anne? maybe Anna, Anna post it for you just so you can grab it um, and just save that you know email us and some people like to send us pictures you can also send them to customer service but definitely post them in our in our group living felt friends which is just an amazing community so many of the people you're seeing on here now are part of that community and just help us keep it going which reminds me you know I just really want to do a shout out to a few people in our community who are like I told Anne they feel like mini moderators because they're always answering questions Questions. They're always helping people even stay within the guidelines, which are nominal, but they're there. They're always directing people even back to the product. We're on a live show. And so just while we're live, I want to say thank you so much to a few of those people. And those are Connie Wood, Kate Housley Williams, and Cherie Davidson. And everybody helps. Everybody, everybody helps. But I swear, I can hardly say anything. And so I'm in a heart, y'all. I can hardly say anything without, uh, you know, someone asking about a supply or where a video is. And one of those gals chimes in to answer the question for everybody. So how about just a round of hearts for our community members who are always so willing to share and help and guide each other. Really appreciate you all so much. Um, Melanie said, did I use a cookie cutter for the star? Yes, Melanie, I did use a cookie cutter for the star. And really, that is so easy to do. I need to anchor this down a little bit. And I think um, we do have an ancient video. <laughs> like, Marie's younger there. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be almost 10 years old of me needle fussing with a cookie cutter. And I laugh because my husband would make me wear the uh, Welcome to McDonald's microphone. <laughs> but I hated it. <laughs> it was so hard. I was, videos were different back then, but uh, I do have one on needle fussing with a cookie cutter. But real quick, let me give you these little tips. Uh, so here's the cookie cutter that I made this little star on. And one of the tips is if you have a cookie cutter with a flat like edge and then you have the sharp edge, definitely put the sharp edge down on your foam. And when you, when you needle felt it, you want to keep good firm pressure of your cookie cutter onto your work surface so that the wool doesn't sneak out from underneath. So hold pressure. And when you fill it, oh, I'm just going to use white. A little girl with her mom made a white star. Remember, for the uh, when you fill it, um, go ahead and divide your wool. And sometimes your cookie cutter might even be more mm, intricate than this one. But take a moment to fill all the points, whatever those points are: gingerbread man hands, or angel wings, or whatever. Tuck wool in all those points and make multiple layers instead of put like one big glob in there so that you can really go in and fill it up. And if you do that, one, you can feel is it all even and level, but two, you're going to make sure that you fill all those little points and fill it up all the way so that you've got a little bit of dimension in there. And then when you needle felt it, 
hold firm pressure on your piece and make sure to go around the perimeter of, am I on camera? Make sure to go around the perimeter of the cookie cutter so that you really get all those outlines. Yes, you're gonna go over the middle too, but you don't wanna skip the perimeter and pull the wool in from the sides. So I start with the perimeter. The other tip I have is keep your needle below the rim if you can. The more you bring it all the way up and down, the more likely you are to hit that rim and bend or break your needle. So keep your needle kind of down. I'm working with a 38 uh, spy star right now because I just want to get all that wool tack down. And then once you kind of get it with, you know, kind of within the framework, you can go back with a multi-needle tool or something like that and just tack it down. And I would feel, is it even? Is it level? Does it feel thick enough as you continue to compress it? Because you can add wool on top. So that's my hot tip. I'm not going to keep uh, needle felting this one, but you absolutely can make it level. And after a certain point, try not to drive into the foam so much, just bounce off it, because then you're gonna have to peel your piece off. So don't take the frame off until you're done, until you, you feel like you have a really good dimension, because otherwise this stuff is too difficult to clean up. But when you're ready, you're just gonna peel it off. And there goes all my, my white right on the, <laughs> right on the foam. The stuff you guys are talking about having to clean it up. There it is, there it is. So I hope that helps whoever asked that question. Thank you. What else do we have? And let's see, Claire asked, could, is it easy to apply string to this to hang on a tree? Oh yeah, yeah. In fact, I meant to, um, uh, what I like to do is just stitch something right through my ornaments. So, you know, find something that you can thread onto a needle. That's what I like to do. If I can thread it onto a needle, it seems that I can usually get it to go through my piece. And I have lots of felt ornaments on my tree at home and on our tree here. So just find something that's easy for you to stitch on. Mm -hmm. Brenda asks, could you use white locks instead of the icing? Sure, you could use yarn if you want, like a little thin. We have 100% wool yarn. You could use yarn, you could use locks. I just wanted to make it sort of lacy, I think would be the word. I wanted to make it kind of lacy. Use whatever you want. There's no rules. <laughs> no rules. Oh, Jenny shares, this would be good for Miles. He's a bit nervous with the needle. Oh, I think it's great. The cookie cutter. Now, when babies come in, and I think I posted a picture of this from our uh, make and take. Someone brought in this little baby, and oh my gosh, she was she was so smart, but she was tiny. What? And she had to be like two or three. She wasn't even three. And they're like, what can she make? And they wanted to needle filled a gingerbread house. So grandma was with her and we gave the baby the skewer. And we gave the baby the skewer and grandma the needle and we just let the baby poke into, while grandma was poking, she could poke with her tool. And she doesn't know any different because kids, you give them a big jumbo crayon and it works, you know, a big marker, it works, or a rounded pair of scissors, they work. So if you have baby babies and they want to participate, give them a fakey. Give him a fakey yeah. <laughs> needle to sculpt with, yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we, have, we have some requests for okay. a, a picture to be posted of our Christmas tree. Oh, okay, okay. We'll post a picture of the Christmas tree. We will. We have ornaments. If you send us an ornament, we'll hang it forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Vicky, uh, Vicky just posted, next year you should have friends send ornaments for a tree at your new place. That would be amazing. Yes, we're getting very excited, or I should say I am personally, because I know the time is coming, <laughs> even though we don't know anything yet. All I know is it's going to happen. That's all I can say is it's going to happen. We're going to be in a new, bigger place. We've got to have room for more friends. <laughs> More friends, bigger classes, uh, bigger project classes. That's why next year we have um, Jean Gogger coming and Eva Camacho coming. Those are bigger classes that require more more workspace. So I've told Anne, we I just know we have to have it because <laughs> we already booked everybody to go. 
so yeah, we'll post a picture of the shop tree. I can't see what else is coming in. Uh, Else says that she loves the snow roofs. Thank you, Else. Yeah, I just got to tack it down better so that I can draft more. Mm-hmm. What else? Someone says you could needle felt pre felt. I can't. Can you see that? You can needle felt it enough and then use a pre felt. What is a what's what's that what's that s saying there? I don't know what. I need to pick my piece up so I can draft this. I've got a twist. If you get a twist, see how like I have a twist here? If you get a twist past where you're drafting, it's hard to draft. And I only know that because I've attempted to spin a time or two. <laughs> Probably not well. Someone says, can you simple example of what used to a barbed needle a barbed needle for? You know what, Cheryl? Uh, Anne, would you link to the reverse uh, barbed needle on our website? On our website, there's a couple of example pictures there. Um, if you click on the actual product and then beneath the product, there are often sample images. I, I must say my, my website examples are grossly out of date. So maybe next year I'll just put out some calls to the community for y'all to send us fresh pictures because um, I haven't updated them in a while. Um, but the reverse barb needle is good for pulling colors through and some people like it for creating fuzzy effects so they might put a longer fiber hair like staple length fiber under a shorter one and then pull that fiber up through the top surface so you might pull colors up or you might pull texture up mm-hmm Build a giant insulated barn that would make in a creative space. You know what, Wendy, you are actually speaking about a long time dream that I've had of, Rodney and I have named it so many times. And um, all I can say is I'm pretty sure it's not happening next year. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, if I could make it happen. Oh, I thought, well, we need room for X number of guests and we need the barn and we need a pool. And it's been on my wish list for a long time. But as I get older, the thought of being the caretaker for all that property <laughs> kind of wanes. <laughs> but there's lots of places you could come stay out here that would might feel barn like. Oh look, and I lost my uh, I lost my trail, but that's okay because you can just start over and I might just cap that off here since we're almost out of time. But y'all can see this this is the fussy part that takes a long time and I think if I were a little bit closer to the project it would go a little faster. I'm just sitting a little high and away from it. So have fun with your if you make a gingerbread house. I hope that you'll post it. Got, if you haven't worked with our MC1 wool, I hope you'll try it. Um, most people who try it like it. Uh, for how easy it is to work with. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for Felt and Chat. Today we wound up this live show, the live version of the live show, uh, with a quick visit to our Christmas tree, which is where we drew our names and prizes. And we couldn't bring both cameras, so if you want to see that, jump on over to our page, fb.com slash livingfelt. That's Facebook dot com slash living felt that's where the live videos are initially and check out our group living felt friends so facebook.com slash living felt friends you're going to find a great great community there and while you're here we'll hope you subscribe and catch us next time thank you have a great day